doing great. How are you? I can only speak for myself personally. I feel like it really hasn't. You know, everything that we've done to get here, uh, we're continuing to doing the same thing. So I think we keep the same approach and, you know, treat it as, you know, obviously it's the national championship, but it's a football game at the end of the day. We got to go out there and execute each and every play. And, you know, that's how we're treating it right now. Uh, my purpose is to ultimately strive every day to be the best version of myself and inspire others to do the same. You know, this great game provides so many life lessons, so many opportunities to grow individually as well as help others grow. And I feel like just being able to, you know, inspire others to be the best, their best selves is, you know, my purpose. Um, that's a great question. Uh, I really don't. You know, I, I actually take that back. I get a little comfortable with every compliment I get. That's just kind of the personality that I have. But, uh, you know, I'm just tremendously grateful for him to be my head coach. And obviously all the great words he says about me means a lot. And, you know, it's just a blessing to play for him. Can you just describe that relationship with you and James and how it's working? Um, you know, it's a mixture of father-son, um, teammate to teammate, um, just great friend to great friend. You know, it's all the above. He really provides every aspect of, you know, a great leader that I want to follow. And, you know, that relationship is a big part of it. Good morning. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it does take me by surprise just because, you know, the tradition of <clears throat> the tradition of Michigan football and, you know, just the strive for excellence that we have that, you know, we try to achieve on a day-to-day -day basis. You expect it not to be this long, but, you know, that's just the way it turned out. And, you know, we're extremely grateful to be here and hopefully go win it so uh, we don't continue that drought. You know, he, he had my Heisman vote, I'm not going to lie. Like, Michael Penix, everything that he's been through, all the adversity he's battled through his injuries and, you know, just continuing to stick to the process and keep pressing on. You know, that's something that uh, Coach Herb always talks about. A future favors those who press on. And he's a perfect epitome of that. And just the player he is, the touch he puts on his ball, the, you know, accuracy, the ball placement, everything about him is just a tremendous quarterback. And I just have so much respect for him. Hey, nice to, see you. nice to see you as well. Houston. Thank you. Give me a sense, just from a year ago when we mm -hmm. were in Arizona, what are yeah. the differences in preparation, in mindset, mm -hmm. in routine for this team as you guys get ready for this game one step closer to your goal than you were last year? I think the difference in preparation you know, different from the last two years was more about ourselves. You know, how are we going to go out there and be the best version of ourselves? And at the end of the day, the last two playoff games, we were beating ourselves. So just being able to stay focused, keep things simple, just stay in the present moment and attack every single day because you never get those days back. You never get that meeting back. You never get that practice back. And I feel like we've done a really good job of trying to, you know, maximize every single day and get the best out of it. And in a day and age when It's extremely special. I feel like that's the reason we are here is because of how much we love each other, how much we play for each other. And, you know, outside of all the NIL, outside of all the transfer portal, we're, we're just like old school football team at the end of the day. We go out there just leaving it all on the line every single play and we play for each other ultimately and I think that's our secret sauce to our success this year. And final question, when was the first time you think you ever dreamt of a national championship as a kid? If mm -hmm. uh, fifth grade. Fifth grade is uh, 
when I started dreaming of, you know, winning championships at the collegiate level and at the NFL level. And just being able to be here now, I'm just trying to, you know, relish in every single moment, just appreciate, you know, God so much for putting me in this position, putting my teammates and my coaches in this position, and we're not going to pass it up. We're going to take full advantage of it. JJ, uh, Coach Harbaugh often brings up Tom Brady when talking about you. Mm -hmm. I, was I was wondering how that makes you feel, because obviously whenever somebody brings up yeah. yeah, it's a tremendous honor. You know, everything about Tom, you like every aspect of his life, every aspect of his uh, game, you want to aspire to be like it. And I feel like me personally, I don't like comparisons too much because we're all individually unique. We all have our different traits, our different aspects about ourselves that makes us special. And, you know, just hearing that, it just kind of gives you that uh, reassurance that you're on the right path and you're doing the right things. And it means a lot. But at the end of the day, I don't like to compare myself to anyone. I just like to go out there and, you know, be, be the best version of myself. How much of a relationship do you have with him? Pretty good one. We uh, we text here and there. I haven't gotten the opportunity to meet him in person, but he's always been great with responding to me with detailed answers and, you know, always been supportive the whole way since I got here. So just so much love, so much respect for Tom and everything he's taught me this far. And, you know, I'm going to continue to keep bugging him. Lastly, it doesn't feel like too much pressure when, you know, when somebody says, hey, you're, you might be the greatest quarterback in, in Michigan history or something like that. No, because, you know, if I took that as too much pressure, I would have to take, you know, someone saying that I'm the worst quarterback to ever come through here as pressure. So if you're going to take, you know, the good, you're going to take the bad, you know, naturally. So I just try to keep everything as noise, keep everything as opinions that everyone's entitled to and just, you know, focus on uh, what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis. JJ, over here. You know, a big point in your season was that Penn State game when in the second half you actually didn't throw a pass that you counted. I mean, yeah. But for you, that a lot of people would say that speaks to your unselfishness as a player. Did you look at that game? Did you understand that from you guys going into the back half of the game? Um. For sure. I'd say, you know, we played a lot of great teams before that, but that was a tremendous defense and tremendous offense, you know, tremendous on special teams. So I feel like getting that win, especially in the fashion that we did, it just, you know, proved to us that whatever it takes, we're going to be able to get it done, whether it's running the ball 32 times in a row or passing the ball 32 times in a row. Like, we're going to find our way to get the victory. And I feel like that unselfishness kind of speaks to the team overall, not just myself. Like, I wouldn't have that, you know, I wouldn't have the zero hesitation that I did unless I was on a team like this. And just being able to, you know, go out there and get the victory, that's all that matters. So Harbaugh, I mean, obviously, I asked about this the other day about how he helped you in-game on the sideline. Is, is it just the presence of having that former quarterback that carries all these things that you've been through on the field helpful? Yeah, you're exactly right. It's the presence. It's him being in similar situations that – I, I would be in in the game and then just talking through each of those situations and you know you could trust the guy when he's been there and done it you know what I mean and you know it, it's just really special to have and I'd ultimately say it's presence on the sideline. JJ, JJ, I just wanted to ask you, 26 and 1, you have the second time 20 percentage starter behind Julio's Chuck Neely, winning 35 and 0 in the 60s, I'm just curious, I'm just curious, yeah. if you've heard of Chuck Neely, I have heard of Chuck Ely, and you know, 35 and 0 is a tremendous, tremendous accomplishment. One that I, I can't see being broke very soon. Um, but yeah, just uh, you know, it all takes the team. It all takes everyone, the coaches, uh, the strength staff, the nutrition staff, everyone that goes into that 26 win. So it's not just myself, but uh, yeah, it, Chuck Ely's a dog. That's for sure. <laughs> JJ, this uh, this program. Yeah. Um, this past week, we spoke to Andy Williams. Um, um, uh -huh. told us how proud she is. Yeah. Um, just curious, you know, how has his story affected the guys throughout this year? Um, I mean, tremendously. Like going back to last year and just being able to see him, being able to have him around the team. Like it was just that infectious energy that he had that kind of you know inspired us and you know, put this jolt of appreciation into us for what we have and just the ability to walk, the ability to play this great game. And, you know, it really puts things in perspective when you have uh, guys like that motivating our team. And, you know, just rest in peace to him. Absolutely love his family. And I know that he's doing great things even beyond um, his, uh, his lifetime here on earth. But, uh, yeah, it's just uh, an extremely inspiring figure that still continues to inspire us to this day.
JJ, when you guys score, you put the crown on your teammates' head, and I've noticed that's caught on with even some of the defensive guys, too. Yeah. Do you remember why you started doing that and how that's caught on with the rest of the team? Um, I just saw it as a celebration that, you know, mostly people like crown themselves. And I feel like, you know, this is the ultimate team game and there's nothing that can be done on a single play without all 11. So I feel like it's just a representation of, you know, it takes all of us and we're going to award every single guy that we possibly can on each and every play, especially if it's successful. JJ, last week I asked you what some of your favorite philosopher was. You said Coach Harbaugh, you shared some of the quotes. Yeah. Yesterday, leading up to last week's game, just yeah. curious what the message or any quote sentences that stick out in your head that he's been reinforcing this week. Mm -hmm. Nothing this week, but uh, he, he's really into, you know, this team kind of replicating a pack of wolves. And uh, he, he's got this little board that he created where it's like the wolves going into the fight, the wolves in the fight, the wolves celebrating, you know, the hunt and the, the, their food, and then the wolves walking away. And just, you know, he, he's going to find any little creative way to kind of relate the outside world to football. And he does it in a beautiful way and actually a very wise way. And, uh, yeah, I just say uh, his message is we're a pack of wolves and we're going to eat our last meal. Hey Molly, good to see you as well. Um, after last year's semifinal loss, you said we'll mm -hmm. be back. Yeah. I promise that. Mm -hmm. How did the heartbreaks in years past lead your team up to this point now where you're finally able to get to the national championship? Uh, you said it right there. Just everything that we went through, it, it forged us. You know, it motivated us in the off season to be better, to do that extra rep, to do more. And I feel like it's ultimately the pain and, you know, uh, failure that pushes you over the hump and pushes you to limits you've never been. So, you know, extremely grateful for those, uh, you know, those failures and everything it did for us. And, you know, we're here now, so obviously it worked. How did those failures change you and make you better? When you lose a game like that, especially in the fashion that we lost, that, that feeling just doesn't go away after you lose that game and after I stopped watching the confetti falling. Like it's, it still sticks with me to this day. So just being able to use that as an anchor every time that I'm feeling sore, every time that I'm feeling tired, um, it ultimately is one of the best things that ever happened to me. So I'm extremely grateful for it. And yeah, it just changed my ultimate mindset and changed my drive ultimately. Um, I think the biggest challenge is going to be, you know, receivers getting open. Um, they do a tremendous job of disguising coverage, and, you know, they're ultimately fast, physical, and they're a veteran team. Like, a lot of the guys are seniors, six years, and they communicate very well. So just being able to not hurt ourselves and play on the same page uh, is going to be huge for us on this one. Great seeing you. AJJ. With all the pressure on this game, with the amount of preparation you guys have spent the last month on really just two games, how have you guys been able to prioritize your mental health, the team's mental health, just being able to be uh, strong mentally as well as physically for these games? Um, I think Coach Harbaugh does a tremendous job of, you know, making sure that we're having fun when we're working. And, uh, you know, that does a lot for our mental health. You know, obviously a lot of the guys do things on the side to just, you know, do it for individual sake, but I feel like Coach Harbaugh just made this schedule like very easy for us. It's not overbearing. Um, we're still getting the work done, but he just made it very effortless. And you know, guys are having so much fun. We're having the time of our life, and we're just enjoying every single moment. Hi, JJ. Hi. Mm -hmm. student athletes. That's awesome. We know that you work online with us all the time, especially before games. Mm -hmm. How did you get into that, and what is your routine? Um, I got into it because in se my senior year at IMG Academy, I was going through a depression. You know, I was in a deep rest for myself. I was always studying all these athletes, studying their mindsets, trying to adopt them in every way to be like, to forge like the ultimate mindset as a competitor. And, you know, I just kept stemming further and further away from myself and, you know, my true nature. And I feel like it just, I was in a deep rut for about, you know, a month or two. And I was like, something's got to change. Like, this isn't who I am. And I started looking up 
different practices to help improve mental health. And meditation was the first one that kept popping up and I just gave it a try and then the rest was history. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful practice. It's really hard at first, but I recommend that people continue to press on with it, continue to stay disciplined with it because the effects are just absolutely tremendous. Of course. Thank you for everything you do. Yeah. Okay. Right now? Hi. Um, he's the epitome of a Michigan man. You know, everything that he went through last year with the injury and just, you know, being in a dark place, but he got out of it and he pressed on. And that obviously we knew that Blake was going to do that, but the, in the fashion that he did, he, he became better from it. And nobody really thought that Blake could get better because he was just already that good. And it just speaks to who he is as a person, his character. Uh, no matter what adversity he's going to face, he's always going to push through and be better coming out of it. And, uh, yeah, it, he just means everything to this team, everything to me, uh, and especially, you know, Coach Harbaugh. Yeah, I'm not even saying on the field. I'm saying how he is as a leader, how he motivates people, how he, you know, conducts his business. He does things at a more efficient rate now in his work ethic. Um, He's, you know, not overdoing things. He's doing just right for him. And I just feel like, you know, his presence, it's a different feel when you're around him now. It's that, you know, that comforting, comforting older leader that's going to help guide you uh, to your highest purpose, your highest uh, self. And I feel like that's somebody that, you know, is the epitome of a Michigan man and he represents it on a day to day basis. Hi. Uh-huh. How we doing, Heather? Awesome. Yeah. Mm. I haven't really thought that far ahead. Uh, I feel like, you know, the, one of the biggest reasons why we're here right now is because of our ability to stay in the present moment. And we're just enjoying every single moment we're here together because we know it's not going to be the same team. It never is. And we love this team. So I just feel like, you know, being able to not think that far ahead on, you know, the future and everything that could happen is just going to ultimately make us better on Monday. Mm hmm Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, it would mean everything just because, you know, it means everything to win the national championship as is, but with all the adversity that we've overcame and everything that we've been through the last two years and just the drought that the Michigan fan base has been going through over the last 26 years, just being able to do it for them as well as us, uh, just be, it would mean the world, it really would, of course. How we doing, yo? Good to see you. Good to see you, man. Yeah. Good to see you. I'm curious if you can answer this one. Uh -huh. Quarterbacks, as you know, often have an expectation placed on them by so many other people. Yeah. Of course, that's happened to you. Anybody that's gone through the level or yeah. plays in Michigan. Yeah. 100%. So, how do you manage that? What advice would you give to other quarterbacks who have to manage other people's expectations of themselves? This might sound crazy, but I would say don't have any expectations of yourself, of any situation you're about to walk into, no matter what game it is. I feel like 
you know, expectations just distort the image of the future. And why not go in there and see what it's all about, really experience it, be in the present moment, each and every moment. And I feel like, uh, yeah, the more you could kind of limit expectations, the better you're going to be when the time comes to play and go out there and have fun. Good scene. Come a long way. <laughs> okay. Of course. I said I was going to answer this question. Oh, jamming. Jamming. Yeah, jamming. Yeah.